This is my travel bag. It goes with me everywhere that I go, whether I'm going to meet with clients or if I'm just going to conferences, everything in here is really important for me to get my work done, especially on the road. I traveled a lot last year. If I add up all the miles, the equivalent that I traveled is like going around the world a little over three times, if my math is correct. From that, I learned quite a bit about traveling, I learned a lot about my habits, and I learned about things that I can do and things that I can have that make traveling easier for me. So in this video, I'm gonna go through what's in here, show you some of the things that I 100% could not live without on the road. The bag itself is really cool. So it looks like a duffel, you can hold it like this, but it also has backpack straps on the back. So it is quite heavy. It is a lot better to transport it with these. You can also open it like a duffel with a zipper that goes all the way around here. Or you can open it from the top like a backpack from a different compartment right here, which is pretty fun. Admittedly, I have no clue where you can get one of these backpacks. Uh, Omen sent it over to me, but this is something I use every single day. Now, let's explore what's actually in here. So the first thing that's actually in my bag is my laptop, which is a G9 ZBook Studio. I have been a global ambassador for Z by HP for the last three years, and I've absolutely loved working with it. Full transparency, I was given my laptop as well as my desktop for free because of my relationship with them. So you can see the aesthetic design, a very powerful computer. I think it has an RTX A5500 in it. And this is what I do most of my work on with my data science job. I don't have to deal with too, too big data, so I can handle everything on here. Also with content creation, I can do all my editing on here. I do have an editor, but I can load and cut things really quickly if I need to. They sent me this, I was working with the G8 ZBook Studio the last couple of years. I was really impressed. They actually took my feedback when I was talking about the things that I thought they could have improved upon. On the G8, the corners were really sharp and they rounded the corners. They still kept a really cool design. So first thing, probably most important thing that I use on my day to day, week to week when I'm traveling. Next, we have my headphones. So I think headphones are a must, especially if you're on airplanes. You also really would like to have noise canceling ones. I've worn the crap out of these, but these are my, I think they're the WMX fives from Sony. Really good noise canceling. I used the WMX fours before and the WMX threes before. Just really good shape, lightweight, feel really good. They do kind of get a little bit oily if you wear them a lot and you can't sleep with them on. So I have another solution for that coming up. But I really enjoyed these, super comfortable, super good headphones, uh, highly, highly recommend. Cool. Next we have this, it's a weird looking contraption, very, very strange, but this is something I put my laptop on as a little stand, so it's closer to eye level when I work. To me, this is something that is unbelievable for saving tension in my neck and back. I've had some neck and back issues over the last couple of years, and this has probably saved me a lot of pain. It's kind of weird if I were to like type like this or use the, the keypad. So I also bring an external keyboard and mouse. I really like mechanical keyboards and this one is very good for traveling. I think it's the, uh, the Keytron K3. I've really enjoyed this. I use uh, tactile keys. This portable keyboard has also been great because it allows me to type at sort of a neutral level while looking at a screen that is around even with my eye line. Uh, I also use a trackball mouse. So some people think I'm crazy for, for using this style of mouse, but on airplanes, it works very well because you don't have to move it around. You can just sit with this on your lap and click and do whatever. This, from a travel perspective, has been one of the, the best investments, only you know, 30, 40 bucks. Okay, so these two books are some of the most important things that I take with me. I'd probably lose my mind if I didn't have them. So this notebook, I just write essentially daily notes, reminders. Uh, at night, I write in it just to put down the things that I'm thinking about each day. Some of the things I have to do the next day, anything along those lines. This book is for my very serious thinking. So if I'm planning about life, if I have something that's very structured, I really enjoy this. This is one of the best notebooks I ever had. Uh, it's 
a gift I got from NVIDIA actually. And I can't pronounce the name, but it's like, it's a German name, Luchterm 1917. But the quality of this notebook is awesome. And it also gives you page numbers and content. So I'll have some close-ups of this, but essentially you can write what page something important was on and have some notes and then you have a reference for yourself to, to go back through it. A lot of the times I'll go back through, you know, I have probably 30 of these notebooks that I've taken over the last 10 years and I don't know where anything is. This is solving that problem. I'm probably gonna have one of these types of notebooks for the foreseeable future. Something I also learned traveling from Hawaii is I fly on United and they do not have uh, Wi-Fi over the ocean. So I've gotten really accustomed to getting a good chunk of reading done. I always usually take two books with me. So anywhere I go, unless it's to another Hawaiian island, is usually about a minimum of five hour flight time. And so five hours without internet, I would go crazy if I didn't have something to read. I have two books that I'm currently reading. So the first one is Blitz, so Drug in the Third uh, Reach. And this is about the history of stimulants and how that might have had some influence in World War II. And the other book I'm gonna start reading is called How Big Things Get Done. And it's about you know, like infrastructure projects and, and what makes a success in like these massive, massive scale projects. I'll let you know how they go, if they're interesting or worth a read or not. But this is what's in my sort of reading bag right now. All right, let's do some of the fun miscellaneous stuff that I have. So just essentials that I don't leave without. So a sleep mask. I had a really nice one that I bought three or four times and I keep losing it on the planes. So if you see a really nice sleep mask in a plane somewhere, it's probably mine. Uh, very important, also this neck pillow. It's relatively portable, uh, but it's a memory foam one and it's super nice. Um, very important for getting sleep. Most of the flights that I do are overnight. I also have this rubber band for some light exercise. Kind of messed up my shoulder recently. So I've been doing a lot of uh, rehab using that. Let's see here. Oh, very important glasses case. So for anyone that wears glasses, you know how devastating it can be if you smudge them. And I went on a couple trips where I completely forgot the glasses case and cleaning cloth. And I had to deal with smudge glasses the whole time, or I had to worry about using a napkin or something and scratching my glasses. So you definitely want to have that. I also make sure that I have a dongle. Dongle, very important. Um, especially if I have to connect directly to HDMI. Recommend one of these if you have to do any presentations. And then toothpaste, um, essential. Uh, I, I hate the toothpaste they have in hotels. I also will bring my toothbrush and stuff, but I figure that's not super interesting for anyone. And make sure I have a bunch of earplugs as well. Those are great for sleeping on the plane, cutting through a lot of noise. Oh, and this is a very strange one, but a uh, hand exerciser, wait, so. I'm sure you all are tired of me talking about training jujitsu, but this is something I use just to practice my grip strength on the plane. Uh, and I just sit there <laughs> and take out my, uh, my, my stress and frustration on this thing. So I can kind of hold this for static grip strength or like finger grip strength. All right, one of the last things I take with me everywhere I go is my camera. I use the FX3 is what I'm recording with now, but I use this Sony ZV-E10 as just my daily sort of carry camera. If I need to get quick video, if I wanna take really nice pictures, I find this to be an excellent camera for me to just bring around with me wherever I go. Some trips I'm also doing conferences or creating content, so I'll bring my whole camera bag. But if it's a little day trip, or not really day trip, like a week trip where I don't need to record any content, I'll bring this just in case and I, I really enjoy it. So that's everything in my data science travel bag. I will also say that I use a G4 Z8 workstation out there. I remote into that if I need to do more compute-tensive jobs, especially using GPUs. I have two A6000s in there, which is pretty exciting. So usually I'm using that for personal projects more than anything else. But if I need to ramp up the power, that's something I can 100% do. And hopefully you're gonna see more tutorial videos and things like that where I actually get to use that in the upcoming months. Hope this is useful to you to understand how a data scientist might travel, especially one that travels quite a bit. So if you're planning a trip, remember to take a couple of these things in your bag. Of course, you can find all the things that I've talked about in this video linked in the description.